So, uh, we are going to discuss about a very interesting topic which says uh, developing a strong institutional brand and identity. Okay, so in marketing we say uh, it's not what you say about your brand, it's what people say about your brand, right? So, and uh, over here we have esteemed panelists who belong or represent uh, the topmost institutions of the region and have been in the space for a very long time. So, nothing better than hearing from them directly. So, uh, my first question to uh, Sudhir sir, what are the key elements that define a strong organizational brand and how can organization, uh, educational organizations I mean, build them? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that uh, uh, first question referring to me. But uh, that's a very good question, I think, Subhajit, because I know today there are a lot of brands I can see in the room i can actually uh, name them quite a few how often they are uh, recalled in same city as a bigger institutes bigger brands and all so if you really recollect or if you really define what brand is from based on my experience i like one statement one of the person who uh, actually defined it properly for me is uh, problem uh, i mean promises made and kept that's, that's the definition which I believe as a brand. Why? Because, uh, see, uh, as an employee, for example, I am also working for a brand. I am actually putting in my career in that brand. Similarly, a student is believing in that brand and investing lakhs of amounts of money in that. And especially faculty, they are also putting their own career, their own life in that brand. So brand, if you see, for me, is promises made and kept. But there are a lot of elements that are involved in this. If you define uh, what are these elements means, uh, having a clear mission statement. I am from Amrita Vishwita Peetam. Of course, all of you know uh, what Amrita as a brand is. Because I work, up, I work for a brand. As you can see, today we have nine campuses across the country and as well as 200 plus programs and uh, we are ranked as the seventh best university in the country but you see in all these things we propagate propagate amrita as a brand we take this brand forward through a clear vision mission statement that as a university that what we have is education for life education for living that we try to inculcate this mission statement in each and every stakeholder that is associated with our university. That is the first and foremost primary thing that we uh, ensure that is there with all the stakeholders. And if you come to the second uh, key element uh, that we all usually uh, discuss about is uh, uh, reputation, credibility, how much credible they are. I mean, are they delivering on what they have promised? Example, how much research they are doing? what kind of collaborations or partnerships they have. So these kind of credible things are they are they delivering uh, as they have promised before. And also emotional connect, connect. How many of you of you can emotionally connect to that brand? I'll give a small example uh, because I like to make uh, fun of people who are usually uh, I mean, dwelling upon brands. So if I am wearing a branded jeans, I'm using a branded phone like that. So if you just uh, in my school days or in my education space also, uh, when whenever this discussion used to come up, I used to tease people who used to use Apple as a brand. You just see, whenever we make fun of an Apple brand, that person take it as a personal uh, 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 thing and he will actually defend that brand. How many of our students or how many of our stakeholders actually does that with our brand? How many of them emotionally believe this is what where I am working. This is what I need to defend. I need to defend this brand. So how many of you are emotionally connecting with that brand? That is one of the key element. And uh, also apart from this, there are elements like consistency where you need to be there consistently delivering uh, all the things that are required to survive or to overcome or overshadow your competitors. So that, can, that kind of consistency is required and a huge network is required. So there are five to six key elements that I can share and uh, building a brand is not a one day job where you can't build this thing in one single night with a, or an ad. Uh, we can't propagate this is a bigger brand because it's a journey. It's a journey that is made by all the stakeholders 
and uh, using this all the elements key elements that i have talked about that is what makes a brand today where people look at what kind of promises that they have made they have delivered it or not that is what defines a brand for me and that is those are the key elements that i can say that today thank you great thank you so much for your line sir so uh, the same question to dr uh, commander velu sir so uh, you know how do you define a brand in your own words good evening to all of you all brand really uh, you know has different connotations for different uh, products as well as uh, different institutions and depending upon the uh, size of the institution as well as the type of courses that is being offered actually in my view uh, uh, you know branding for a cloth is something different and branding for an institution is totally different uh, institutional brand need not be well known to be very frank with you to the masses institutional brand should be known to the people who really matters actually okay for example in our case in our own uh, sri venkateshwara group of institutions we have two colleges and we do only mba and mca for the last uh, 17 years 2007 in fact many of you may not be uh, hearing about our college also many people may not be knowing also but still we are doing very well actually okay and that's because i feel the branding in our case uh, no i think we are the only one institution we are not uh, engaging consultants for admissions okay still we uh, you know uh, help uh, get uh, almost 90% of the admissions and we are doing well okay and i personally feel over the period of 17 years as he was mentioning uh, we try to uh, build our brand by delivering what we promise actually okay slowly and steadily and uh, that's how we uh, in our college we build the brand uh, everybody the particular segment of people who look for uh, you know post graduation mba and mca has a difficult you know specific uh, you know goal okay as long as you nurture that goal and ensure delivery of this particular thing during the short period what they are with us and uh, you know they uh, uh, they uh, you know uh, spread across the brand in fact you don't believe that uh, we are the one college we don't do any ref- uh, referral fees we don't give any referral fees to the students even if they bring in about 10 students 15 students but still we don't pay anything money or in terms of scholarship in terms of reduction of fees and thing like that but still almost about 50% of our admissions are through referrals of my alumni okay and they're doing well that's how i personally look at the branding of the institution is great thank you so much sir uh my next question uh, to karthik sir So Karthik sir uh, you are the CEO uh, of Facebrip you know with 15 plus years of experience in the industry and uh, you know training a lot of students 2000 plus education institutions over the past 15 years so uh, sir so uh, according to you how can we measure the effectiveness of branding efforts and what are the metrics should be prioritizing thank you uh, a quick introduction to Facebrip so we've been running this institute for the last 15 years and we're probably india's largest skill development company where we've trained more than 50 lakh students over the past 15 years in classrooms and we're now also evolving as a b2c brand where we are running our own degree programs in partnership with universities so there has been a huge transition that we've made over the last couple of years where from largely being a b2b brand we're also evolving ourselves as a b2c brand so it's in a place like this where the whole thought process of branding and what does your company stand for how does it get interpreted everything had to kind of go through a significant thought process and we had to kind of reinvent the whole thing now because as long as we were working largely as a b2b company right the way you're communicating is very very different because you're probably talking to the decision makers you're talking to the decision influencers they know about your track record decisions are made there is very very little effort that goes into kind of advertisement or promotions from a brand building strategy but then this completely changes 
the second you start doing a B2C kind of a brand. And most of us represent educational institutions where we do admissions, right? And we've spoken a lot about the challenges and how as a last resort, in a lot of cases, we are having to depend on admission consultants. See, I'm pretty sure no one who runs an educational institution wants to do admissions with the help of educational consultants. We're doing it because we kind of push to that as a last resort. And one thing that I believe most of you would agree with me would be the best thing for us to happen or the best way to run an educational institution is if you are able to get all your seats filled with the best quality students, then running the institution becomes so much more easier. See, definitely an institute cannot work at a lower capacity because straight away you're compromising on the potential revenue and that's going to have an implication not just in the first year till the time the batch graduates. So that's going to be a challenge. So a lot of institutions at the starting phase or till they get established are fighting just to get the seats filled. But then beyond that, what are you looking at? How do you improve the quality of intake? So I think the real measure for a brand, particularly in the education space, should be related to the quality of students whom we are able to attract. And in a lot of cases, I would even argue that it should not be based on marks because the educational marks that you get out of 12th standard is by and large their ability to do well in a rot learning system, right? So outside of that, can there be other ways in which you can measure the skills of these students? And can you attract the best quality students to your institute? To me, I think that is where the effectiveness of a brand, particularly for an educational institution, needs to be measured. Great. Thank you so much. I would pass on the same question to Bina Ma'am as well uh, for your inputs on that. What exactly is the question? So it was uh, how can we measure the effectiveness of branding efforts and what are the okay, metrics so that you are... About metrics, is it? Yes. Okay. So first of all, I thought it would be ladies first and now you've given chances to all the men and then you're... No, we are still having <laughs> sir left. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Um, I've been listening to all... Yeah. <laughs> no, I've been listening to all these people. They all talk about big institutions. Ours is a very, very small one. And so my experience would be, you know, dedicated only to that. Ours is a... You said you have two institutions. We have only one. Well, I'm also a marketer, I would say, because I market my institution as a... I'm the director of the college, but then, you know, admissions happen through me. So that way, I'm a marketer. I teach marketing. So the way I look at what I'm teaching and what I'm doing, there's a lot of uh, similarity, I would say. So what happens is with uh, something called the brand personality. And uh, we maintain that. When I say brand personality, what is it that we do? Uh, we are a group of individuals who were teachers who came together and decided to start this institution. We called it Happy Valley because we were not very happy with whatever we were getting in our previous institutions. So that's the core. <clears throat> so when I say make people happy, it starts from uh, our stakeholders. So starting from our investors to teachers to students to parents to everybody. And I would say we have been successful there. So when I say that, it doesn't come easy. What do we do? We, we were all talking about uh, keeping up your promises. Well, what we do is uh, under promise and over deliver. That's been our mantra from the beginning. And uh, every month, you know, I just have an informal chat and I ask, what is it that your other friends in other institutions are doing? So this is just to pep me up, whether it is for them or not, I do not know. But I get this consolation that, okay, whatever we are doing, we are doing it right and we are moving in the right direction. So I think that itself is the biggest metric for us. There have been some people who come and ask us, uh, you say all this, you do all this, why are you pricing it at this point? It's maybe the typical middle class mentality that we have, where we say we need to give them lots, you know, but you can't charge them more. So that's again, when you talk about metrics, how do I uh, really put my hand on it and say this is it? Metrics is of course data, data is qualitative, quantitative. Qualitative, when I say happy, I look around in my class, if everybody is looking at me, smiling at me, my data is done. My metric is measured qualitatively. Uh, quantitatively, if I see that out of my 120 students, only 118 come to class, two people don't come, my metric is measured. Whereas we run at full capacity, people come, it's not a residential campus, but 99% stay in the residential campus. And uh, I mean, we get it done. So all this, how is it happening? 18 years, not very easy a fees which is uh, half of what uh, Firebird is charging. <laughs> uh, but yet, we do almost more than what they do. Sorry. 
but then uh, we do a lot more but charge less so is it the price versus a brand i do not know it's i think the product today i guess education has been so commoditized that we need to brand it and this branding is not just happening because we talk about uh, positioning somebody was telling me positioning is for lazy people and we are trying to position it in this clutter i do not know how it's going to happen so what metrics are we talking about here metrics is only uh, in marketing parlance we call it the nps or the net promoter uh, score so which means how many of you how many of them recommend your institution or how many would you ask uh, people to join as uh, wing commander velu was saying yes it is that it's how many people come and join us people do join us and the referrals are more so which means i win in my nps how many followers are there we get followers if not on the website at least we get individual followers and the sum of all total is the total followers yes so then our metrics uh, do well so like that we can keep taking up many metrics and i think so far the ticks have been good we need to make a bigger tick by making bigger sound as always we make very less noise and that i think is one metric which we should measure and do something about it thank you thank you so much for your uh... and so ma'am i had a lot of takeaways from that so uh, i would uh, ask the same question to uh, ma'am also dr nazima ma'am uh, you know what are your thoughts about it yeah uh, very good evening like uh, i'm in this field i'm uh, in this field academician for the past 25 years and uh, for the past 7 years i'm working as a principal for the different institutions this is just to be, uh, explore a lot of things on admissions to have explored a lot of things on admissions and i feel that metric uh, the metric what you ask for is about trust the trust we build in our students and faculty is one of the most important metric which we uh, which uh, how the college is branded and uh, the next thing is like when we uh, when we talk about brand ambassadors our faculty and students are the brand ambassadors yes uh, so i actually uh, differ with what uh, karthik was mentioning like you were mentioning like we need to in take only quality students within but yeah you but uh, there are so many colleges which actually taken uh, students who are of lower quality and they bring out some excellent uh, skills in them and they place them in a very very good company also this is a service which has been done by our institution also the parks institution where i work wherein we take students from rural and economically backward community and we place them at at large so branding has to be created in those sort also that's what i feel that is also one of the I largely agree with you, ma'am. Maybe I didn't put across my point as clearly as I wanted to. Yeah, of yeah. course, uh, I'm not saying that institution should look for the best quality students. What I'm saying is, it's a natural transition for institutions where, as the institution grows in stature, it will start attracting better quality students. Yeah, yeah. We've yeah. seen that I happen across institutions. Yeah, See, yeah, today an IIM or an IIT tends to attract the best quality, best students, quality students for a reason. right now uh, of course and that's where i also very cautiously mention the quality of students is not measured based on marks and when you spoke about some students doing very well they are people who had the necessary skills at least at some level of course the college would have done its fair bit in terms of nurturing them but then today we do not have systems or methods to kind of understand the multiple skills that kids have when they join the institute yeah. i'm very so, glad that you are identifying those skills and nurturing those skills ma'am yeah when dr davmani ma'am was also speaking about uh, students she said we have to pick some students from government schools and then we have to build in skills now what the government schools are doing is they are actually uh, they are actually building only inferiority complex in them once when they come into colleges they feel very inferior when they speak with the matriculation students or with the cbsc or iic students because uh, once the, the government schools are not been given with languages the one thing which we need to te teach in government schools is english japanese french spanish etc all the languages first has to be taken up and this is going to uh, diverting the entire show so i'm just giving this uh, so my thing would be uh, the students and the teachers yeah great 
uh, I think all of us had a lot of uh, takeaways uh, with uh, different kinds of opinions coming into the picture. So, uh, my next question would be to Dr. Mohan sir. Uh, sir, how does a well-defined brand identity influence student enrollment and retention, especially in a competitive market like Coimbatore? First of all, I thank the uh, measure of brand is uh, admission. I am very proud to t uh, say that last five years we attained 100% admission. So that is uh, full effort we are putting. So branding, brand is a reputation and image in the people mind. So it is a it will, it is, every brand will have uniqueness. So it distinguished, uh, the, from that, they recognize. See, if you take KFC, we already know. Coca-Cola, we already know. That's a brand. So we have to build a brand. Means, we have to enhance both uh, image and reputation. In this, there are two ways to do this. First one is top-down approach. Second one is bottom up approach. If you do the top up, top down approach, that is a short term, just like marketing. So if you give marketing, that uh, objective of marketing is, uh, first you have, uh, if you do marketing, so first you should, uh, what, what your customer or consumer should feel. Based on this, you can do the marketing. Then how, how they should remember, second. Third, uh, what way your institution is differentiated from, distinct from other. These are the uh, top-down approach. Bottom-up approach is to build the reputation. It's a, you, are, you have to give the value proportion. You have to give the quality. So this is the second one. Second one, uh, for uh, giving the second one, we have to see that uh, brand, uh, branding, if you see TV, so you have, you are, you are, uh, those who are purchasing the TV, so for, to fulfill the TV, you have, to, you have to do the branding. But educational institution is different. You have to attract, first, you have to attract the student. Second thing, you have to attract the company also for placement. That's super. Previously, it is not like this. Now, our duty is giving the placement also. Then only the things will happen. So that we have to fulfill both. So, but uh, both uh, uh, needs are different. So the uh, students' expectation, all of you know, that they are minimum present in the college. So they want to do different things. But what the industry expectation is very, very high. So we at KIT, Kalanyar, Karnanadi Institute of Technology, we serve both. So, but uh, uh, top-down approach also we are doing that marketing. Then uh, bottom-up approach also we are doing. So in this, what is there with, that is effective, we focus on effective and efficient. So effective, what effectively, uh, effective things do, to do, so short time, we have to, the, the time is short. So effectively and efficiently. So for this, we, we are doing something BPO. So this, uh, those who are experts in this field that we are giving, then we are getting things so, so with smaller duration. Then, uh, so for this, we have to do like this. This previously, five day match. After that, one day. Now, T20. So like this, students, this fast change. So to fulfill this, we have to do this BPO, all those things. Then, uh, uh, expectation of the industry. If you go expectation of the industry, they should have technical skill. Then uh, uh, communication skill, all uh, soft skill. Then uh, in addition to this, additional in what way you you are unique with other institution. We have to project the various various certification course. We are uh, we have to do. In addition to that, we have to build culture. Culture is the base for this. We are uh, doing that also. In this aspect, we are doing. So for this basic thing is we build strong process and system. So we have, our objective is to build the strong culture, strong culture in addition to that system and process. It pays. That's why we last five years, as is Sarsh said, that is a measure. It's a 
the five years, uh, we are attained 100% uh, result. Great. Uh, Sudhir, sir, I would like to pass the same question to you uh, for your inputs on this. Uh, yeah, uh, see, uh, retention and enrollment, right? Yeah, see, uh, usually today there are a lot of options for students. Uh, there are, before when I was making a career decision, I just know engineering, medicine, NATO, army. So these are the three career options I know. But today students have a lot of options to choose from, a lot of institutes to choose from. And they are consist consistently looking towards a environment or ecosystem that can be equipped with all the modern technologies, modern uh, industry demanded curriculums. So these kind of things students are looking for to enroll themselves in. Uh, it's not about a institute or a brand or organization, but any institute can attract uh, uh, students if they are completely aligned towards the current industry demands or uh, current uh, modern technologies that are currently being used. So if you are uh, having our curriculums uh, aligned towards that automatically the enrollments will come up and especially now nowadays because of the uh, childhood i mean the academic system k12 academic system that current students are having it's a uh, completely isolated i will say because of the competitive environment that they are in so they are getting devoid of the activities that they do actually no physical activity or no extracurricular activities. Uh, if higher academic institutes can give a holistic education, not only just academics today, so uh, ultimately they will get attracted to it. Because uh, when I was joining, uh, I used to just think after inter, I don't have uniform. I can just go in civils. So when I did in uh, uh, BTEC in IIT, I was like, oh, this is a, a very good culture to live in. So they look forward to the culture. Enrollment usually happens uh, towards mainly for the reasons like the culture of the uh, university and uh, the technologies or the curriculums that they are using currently. So these are the things that actually motivates the students to enroll. But retention happens only through the experience that the current uh, students that they have. Because uh, whatever experience they are currently going through, because we can tell this is one of the best university, this is one of the best uh, organization that you can complete your undergrad. But once they come inside, uh, how much the experience which we have uh, propagated uh, outside the university, are they getting it exactly once they come inside the university? So these people actually will be the uh, storytellers outside. They will share, oh, this is the best university you can live in. Because oh, you just look at an example, you talk with any IIT uh, alumni, they will share, this is my IIT life is the best I, life that I had. Our, so they tell their experiences, they tell uh, what they did in the university. So that will help in more retention, that's what I will say. So for enrollment, just align ourselves for the current needs and for retention, just uh, do what best you can for the currently available students at your university. That's what I'll say. Yeah, thank you. So Dr. Velu, sir. Uh, I think I'll do after Bina. Otherwise, yeah. still complain. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, so I was actually coming to her also, but then she has already touched upon some pointers in the previous discussion. That's why. Yeah. Uh, specifically, any, any any point to what you're telling? So, uh, the same uh, question was like, uh, how does a well-defined brand identity influence student enrollment and retention in uh, such a competitive market? Yeah, certainly. The... As I already told that uh, institutional branding need not be known to each and every person across in the thing. It should be known to the right person actually. Okay. For example, I would like to tell you this today, this year. Okay. Uh, our branding has reached to somebody like uh, one company called Explio, an IT major in France. Okay. And they came asking for with uh, two crores of CSR funding. And I'm happy to say that uh, our college was recognized by them and we, uh, we got two crores of CSR funding for free education of 35 students for MCA. And we selected uh, most of the uh, students from the rural background and out of 35, almost about 14 of them are uh, single parent uh, children and uh, all of them got uh, more than 80% marks in fact. And uh, rest of them all uh, mainly from a rural background. And uh, I'm happy that if uh, 
my brand could reach uh, explio and they came ca coming to me okay i think uh, we made the brand uh, just to add to what both of you spoke i think graduation outcomes play a very very critical role in defining the brand identity of an educational institution so what do i mean by graduation outcomes stage 1 number of students who are completing the graduation see this might look like a very basic thing everyone enrolls completes no not really that's a problem free thing only for the top 25 percentile institutions so if you're already there great then you can focus on other things but then there are a lot of institutions where the number of students graduating within the stipulated time itself is a concern that that's level 1 very basic thing now level 2 would be of these kids who are graduating right typically 70 80% of them look for placements and then the rest of them some of them take up higher education some of them become entrepreneurs some of them prepare for competitive exams and such but for these kids who are looking for placements particularly how many of these kids are we able to get them placed what kind of salaries are we able to get them placed what kind of companies are we able to get them placed plays a huge role around the identity of the brand right so if you look at uh, how the whole decision making as far as admissions are concerned no today probably when i uh, enroll for my graduation i am not even sure if i was a decision influencer but clearly my parents were the decision makers but today i think there is a role reversal students are more of the decision makers parents to a certain degree are the decision influencers so i think there is a clear role reversal around that we able to see uh and i see this in most of the non engineering courses in engineering courses still where parents are the decision makers is where engineering admissions are happening other courses kids make the decisions is something that we've been observing in a lot of cases right and in cases where parents make decisions clearly they are looking at graduation outcomes they are looking for cases where kind of people whom they know or known contacts have graduated and what kind of uh companies are they getting placed what kind of salaries are they commanding and stuff like that kind of helps build the identity of the brand sir in addition to that graduation placement also uh, expected sir i think in addition we have to make them uh, entrepreneurs like uh, they have to be skill inculcated and they have to have the mind of uh, having built something build a product and technology transfer everything has to be done along with that not only placement i have in fact i don't agree with uh, the placement 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 and thing like that i'm telling you um, our uh, youngsters in the colleges are uh, being misled by the name placement i'm telling you uh, really speaking uh, as long as you uh, teach good swimming to your person and you will swim anywhere okay for example uh, i am uh, running a uh, mba and mca institution okay there are about uh, for employing an mba graduate there are more than about 1 lakh or 2 lakh uh, companies around uh, india or abroad or whatever it is how can i bring 1 lakh companies to the uh, thing is it really possible okay and similarly for mca and thing like that there are so many uh, companies people all know that okay infosys and thing like that maybe about five five or six uh, it majors okay but they are not uh, employing all the people okay there are more than about 1 lakh start small companies in um, in bangalore itself more than about uh, 50 60000 companies it companies they are all employing uh, so many people actually and all our students in fact uh, last 17 years all of them are employed actually my this thing is uh, this uh, some or other uh, institutions um focusing on placement or stating uh, placement as a branding uh, a tool or something like that certainly i don't agree because what i could uh, so i'm very sorry to say uh, excuse me uh, ladies and gentlemen that uh, 90% of the placement claims are bogus today okay and i'm very sorry to say that and this should not be misled by uh, to the youngsters and uh, all that what is the purpose of the institution you should give a good education okay that's all and you do that automatically that fellow will find the uh, thing but without that uh, you try to push him here push him there and thing like that and uh, you say that i i'm giving 100% placement or something like that then uh, uh, what is the use okay even even in uh, iits they are finding it difficult to 
support 100 percent i i was just having a um, long chat with i am kolikot director uh, about last last month in fact they had to go through you know seven nine stages of uh, placement drive last year to uh, you know fill the uh, put up the 100% placement thing it's not that easy okay and you should not be doing it that also okay as long as you teach the person like madam was telling okay uh, i wanted to ask her actually but uh, personally i didn't uh, by the time she left she was telling nursing students within four years even if they are uh, starting from lower rank but they do a better job whereas uh, engineering students after four years they are not doing the same thing like the same but tell me in this in uh, coimbatore okay i was just talking to the project director of uh, navinash road uh, you know playover that's being constructed i asked him how many institutions are uh, sending their civil students civil engineering students for internship uh, with you the last two years that uh, building uh, thing flyover is going on okay and i am very sorry to say not a single institution has sent any of the civil engineering students for internship in the avinash road flyover and same thing with the kodam flyover also okay and how can you expect uh, the students be performing so well okay and it is happening next door okay why can't you send them for about half a day uh you know uh, every uh, week at least for for one month he will know what it is okay that fellow will not be doing what is saying okay i'm very sorry to say that i'm i'm not uh, saying anything the placement uh, is a big misnomer that is being mis- being mislit okay by the institutions to the students uh, ma'am you would like to add some points on that uh, uh, i completed my b degree in 1984 at the time in the college there, there is no placement officer now all the colleges are having placement officer thing that Why? we place them also but i also would like to add like merito also helps us in enrollments and retention also so when we enroll uh, when we they give us a leads and they give us leads and lead nurturing which helps us in enrollments and also uh in retention in most of the cases because of the counselors which we have they counsel and they retain so i would like to appreciate merito also for that right ma'am so i think uh, you are kind of referring to you know all the automations which are at play you know once the students are enge- uh, enrolled uh, how you can keep them engaged uh, till the time the classes start or till the time you know uh, they are at a certain level so you know, i totally understand that ma'am you would you like to add some points there I think a different question is okay we've been hearing the same thing for a long time <laughs> so uh, so i have a different question for you then so uh, what are the strategies that can be used to maintain a brand consistency across all communication uh, channels and touch points you're putting a very difficult question to a teacher i will try <laughs> to answer that because see when you talk about consistency it means remaining the same mm, i beg to differ a brand should always be very it's like fashion you know it needs to keep changing otherwise it gets too monotonous so a brand should always be evolving <laughs> and uh, revolving around something which is more current so what you need to do is to find what the generation wants today there's a lot of uh, i would say cannibalization happening happening we ourselves kill our own uh, whatever things we have been talking about we come up with something and kill whatever we have been trying to say in the last year so i think we need to do something better we need to you fix that percentage of 1% 5% 10% make it better for the students make it better for people who are delivering things to them so that it gets better but yet we need to do something called as an audit i would say we need to continuously do a brand audit to see where we stand any brand of the brand as such is uh, you know when you ask them how do you define a brand it is your name logo i'm not talking about that but then there's something else called your verbal identity and your visual identity it starts there what are you trying to communicate are you trying to communicate that i'm so and so and are you maintaining it but with different you know with different points touch points should be different your moments of truth keep changing every single year what worked yesterday need not work today so i don't believe in consistency i believe in evolving the ultimate point of the branding is uh, that we have to uh, example you, you take uh, one product called uh, dalda it is a uh, uh, the, the name of the uh, 
branding is changed into name of the product the name of the product name is hydrogenated coconut oil that is vanaspati but vanaspati is changed into dalda dalda is the brand name of the like so xerox generic brands yeah so xerox we, our, brands, yes. as madam said we have to evolve to reach that stage same way long back um, kerosene now the name also changed into kerosene is uh, all villages they call it as a krishna oil that krishna oil supplied the kerosene they will not call it as a kerosene it is a krishna oil the product name is changed to that brand so we have to as madam said we have to evolve to that stage so yeah yeah that's what i was also saying so, karthik sir uh, would you like to add some points on that yeah i think what the panelists spoke about makes a lot of sense see particularly when you're talking about how things evolve as a brand right everyone wants to evolve and hopefully it's always an upward momentum so naturally what you're communicating as a brand right at your initial days cannot be the same as an evolved brand as well so i kind of agree with the panel that it constantly keeps improving right uh, so these sir you would want, want to add some points there uh, yeah what they said is evolving is correct but uh, today as you see that evolution has a, a simple process that we follow usually because as we see the continuous updation of the technologies uh, and the changes that are happening the main core thing which we want to have to make our brand uh, have a consistent place is to equip our uh, stakeholders with a required training and uh, uh, required knowledge because all these people should be updated because uh, the main thing which, which we observe is today if you can see in all our homes a kid is using a smartphone and opening it without anybody's interference opening his favorite youtube channel watching a cartoon show and nobody needs to tell the password also when these people coming into education system they are already equipped with the high end uh, technologies they already know the terms so especially our staff is uh, our our stakeholders who are in the university are updated with it with that or not first we need to check and there should be a continuous feedback me mechanism that should be there because where we are lacking what we need to improve that feedback mechanism need to be set up uh, in every organization to improve and maintain that consistency that what i feel but uh, so this is a process i told but the evolution process that they told is i truly agree with it this is the process with yes ma'am yeah. the what uh, happens is when we take the feedback from the students we don't really get uh, the right thing on the feedback first thing so uh, i think here also technology plays a very important role uh so brand consistency if we have to see whether we are evolving with a brand or whether we are consistent with a brand whatever may be like we, even we have to do an analytics of how the student had come and that was your question i believe and that question uh, like that uh, needs to be on the feedback side but it cannot be done through a uh, through a written feedback it has to be done with technology and i think uh, there also some analytic tool has to play an important role on that because the data which is collected from the student and then it is analyzed and reviewed so there are different level first on first level is recognize if you give the group of name uh, that the people that will recognize that particular thing that is first stage then second stage is recall the second the without anything they will recall that third one is top of mind that anything you are telling top of mind the final stage is brand preference they will they will give the preference for that brand that is the fourth stage then that's what it wait as your madam said it, we have to evolve from one stage to second stage third fourth like this commander velu sir uh, you want to add some points there no i think what they are all telling is uh, uh, rightly uh, dr vina vina said is, uh, you know brand is not a static thing it is a evolving thing actually and i personally feel uh, uh, now that uh, as long as you are uh, moving on uh, even after 15 years okay <laughs> that means your brand is okay accepted by the masses okay that's how i could like it thank you or you can tell it as a branding is a journey that is not uh, destiny so uh, it's a process right so uh, my next question would be to uh, starting with uh, karthik sir uh, as we look to the future 
what emerging trends will shape the branding strategies of uh, educational organizations as a whole so i think as i earlier touched upon who is the decision maker who is the decision influencer is undergoing a significant change and the way people consume content and the way people form their opinions is also consistently evolving and similarly what are they looking at in an educational institution is also significantly changing now let's say if we were to look at it from the college point of view i think there was a point where infrastructure was something which was of prime importance when people were making their decision on which institutions they wanted to join so if you were to look at advertisements that used to be placed like let's say 10 15 years back you would find most of them to be highlighting the infrastructure that was available in the campus now if you were to look at something over the last 5 years last 2 years and all it's undergoing a significant change of course the medium in which we are communicating our brand is also significantly changing so from what used to be newspaper advertisements tv advertisements to today changing it to digital media is now completely undergoing a significant change and so along with the medium getting changed and what people are looking at in educational institutions undergoing a significant change i think what they're communicating is changing so and i think by and large uh, while sir had a very negative view around placements i still have a feeling placements and kind of uh, whatever i i would still like to call it as graduation outcomes rather than just use the word placements because i'm covering other kids getting placed people able to run their own startups at the end of their program get into higher education whatever it is the success of these students at some level gets measured at the end of their graduation through these things and how colleges tend to communicate this is going to be a huge part of their brand identity as we move along Uh, so would you like to add some points there so it is expectation students expectation is continuously changing same way uh, industry expectation is changing the environment is changing so according to this same way that uh, you all so you all know that uh, uh, drugs are there adalla these are the one thing we should focus on this are the effect uh, all are changing so according the according to that we have to give, build good infrastructure then uh, dedicated faculty members that is important thing so then uh, uh, yeah. what are the uh, uh, yeah. some core business process we we should have some uh, uncore areas we have to outsource just like training other certification course they will be expert in this doing that then we will outsource that same way training process soft skill or uh, certification course we can outsource is the way uh commander fellow sir yeah uh, uh, really uh, if you ask me there's particular thing is slowly we are going out of uh, the focus area the focus area of the as i told you earlier the focus area of the college is to impart knowledge okay i personally feel that every institution should concentrate 80 to 90% to impart the knowledge for which he has got enrolled okay instead of that beating around the bush and thing like that without he knowing he comes i just he comes with 85% in bca and i ask him okay just write a small uh, c programming for 5 plus 5 is equal to 10 he doesn't know okay the what he did for last 3 years in a bca or a bsc computer science and is this a education okay i personally feel that if you go to western countries and thing like that, but madam was talking about it i had been to so many western countries colleges and thing like that when personally even last uh, uh, may i was in water school of business and thing like that i talked to uh, many of the professors there and thing like that if you see what is the difference between our, our education and the western countries education or uh, other education thing other countries they focus mainly on the learning outcome whereas in our call in our institutions and thing like that we don't do that actually if you just see the final year students what he is supposed to know whether he knows or not okay he doesn't know in fact about 80% of the uh, time i found that he doesn't know what is to be uh, what is required okay i personally feel if you want to have a your own uh, institutional branding in the long run focus on good education import knowledge for which he has joined i personally feel that will give you a long term strong uh, brand equity 
than uh, any other lipstick uh, measures. So they said. Yeah, uh, there are certainly uh, certain aspects uh, which uh, we should dwell upon when we talk about emerging trends. For example, uh, uh, today a lot of the students are looking at a personalized education. They don't want to go to college. They don't want to go to any institute. They want to sit in front of their system. They want to get an uh, education which is at their pace, which is at their comfortability. So this kind of thing, one thing which we should be uh, seriously looking at because that's going to change a lot of aspects also in the coming uh, days because an AI which can customize my learning experience uh, is a serious thing which we need to think upon. That is one aspect which I will tell personalizing uh, the whole education landscape uh, as well as the technologies that AR, VR technologies that can give you a real life uh, um, experience of learning. That is also one thing. And uh, the having this global exposure because today university should look up uh, at a, a venture where they can at least give a uh, not only uh, at least gives give them some exposure where they can learn from different perspectives different personal so be a platform for these uh, these people so and uh, giving them this kind of or equipping with these kind of trends can actually give an edge for an organization in the coming days uh, so that's what i feel yeah uh, Dr. Nazio, ma'am. So, um, I agree with whatever Ms., uh, Mr. Siddhi said uh, because uh, that's what is technology. So, here, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, many things are coming in and uh, these things has to be incorporated in this, this libis and given. And not only that, the technology uh, way by which we can improve our brand is also one thing which we need to do. So today, digital marketing, a hybrid mode would be better as uh, yeah, only, uh, only digital or only uh, counseling or something may not work out. So a hybrid mode of thing by increasing the admissions increasing the uh, increasing the marketing aspects also and increasing the skills and in, within the students would be much better that's thanks so this is the last question to the last person we are getting hungry the second last question to the last person <laughs> <laughs> my last question will be like for all of you are you know, just a two liners so oh. you can take it no it depends on that my answer depends on that <clears throat> you're talking about technology and as I was listening to all of you i thought i would just tend to differ a little I would want to draw parallels to marriage and, uh, you know, students. Long back, I don't know why it got stuck. Uh, when uh, Padma Lakshmi came away from Salman Rashti, everybody was asking her, how can you come away from Salman Rashti? You know, he's such a great uh, author and how can you just get away from her? And uh, he, she said one thing. She said, wedding, most of, our, most of us Indians get married because of all the things that happened before the wedding not after. So we like to buy certain things, we like to dress up so much, we like all shopping, we like all that and therefore we get married. And after that we do not know what to do. So the same thing for our students. It's a matter of convenience for them. You just sit, everything comes to you. People call you, it's a matter of convenience for them. Admissions come to you and if it doesn't come, they come home and then they say EMIs and everything possible. It's a matter of convenience. You bring them to college, it's like you know, taking, getting married and bringing them home and after that they do not know what to do. So it's either divorce or you continue to, you know, stay, bite your tongue and stay for the next three years, four years. That again is happening. And the least distractions that a, a student can have is technology. So unless otherwise you hook them onto technology, there's definitely going to be a divorce of the institution with the student or the course with the student. So what do you do? Today, there are only two things that are possible. Today, every student is a loner and all his friends are there in the virtual media. So what can you do? You try to hook them there. And how do you do that? Today you give them something where they have a purpose. Like for example, he keeps talking about 1984 and 94. <laughs> Today my son, he has hair more than mine and he has more rings more than uh, what I have it here. And he talks about uh, inclusivity and diversity and he talks about some, um, you know, procession in Bangalore. I'm, I'm stuck. I, I don't know. I do not know what to do. But then if I don't understand him, he's going to go away from me. That's the same case with all the students in our institution also. Technology which can bring them closer to what is their purpose is what we need to identify one. Second is we talk about minimalism. It's not about minimalism with number of uh, 
you know, clothes that we have in our wardrobe, but it's about what we like to communicate. If any technology can give you the minimal things that are important for them for life, for the course of whatever is important to them, I think our work is done. And I think I'm done. Thank you. So ma'am, uh, so this is the last question to, uh, the common question to all of you. So we'll just take uh, you know, two minutes from each one of you and we'll cover this question from all of you actually. So with increasing competition among educational organizations, right? Uh, how are different departments using technology to enhance visibility and attract the right student demographic? So starting with uh, ma'am, so you you have already covered certain no, points. I, yeah, yeah. And just no, I add think some more. I almost answered that question. See, visibility comes from any brand uh, image or whatever you call it, brand identity comes from a decision for a student to identify himself with uh, that particular brand. If you can help him identify, I think your work is uh, done. So I do not know what I'm worth. I do not know what I'm. I need to have five good friends around me to identify what is good in me. Similarly. Today, as I said, they don't have friends. So who is it? Technology should identify what is it that he is good at. If you can just put him, I mean, if you can just align it with that, as I said, work is done. And I think technology should enable that. Thank you. So uh, I agree with Bina, but uh, the only thing is like the department should identify what is the unique selling point of theirs and then make it visible as a brand through technology. So that's it. Uh, yeah, uh, so I have a bit long answer for that, but I, I don't take uh, much time. So why uh, I am telling this is because today, I mean, before there used to be uh, CEOs or the institute heads who make decisions based on gut feeling, entirely based on their experience and gut feeling. But today, these decision makers need to be analysts. So they need to analyze the data that they have at their disposal, especially uh, me working for an institute like Amrita, we, have, uh, we are working with... Uh, crowd all over the country for 200 programs and almost 30 plus 30,000 plus admissions uh, the number of applications we get the number of campaigns we do everything the decision is entirely based on analytics it's not just based on somebody's experience it's not just uh, based on somebody's gut feeling and also even our chairman if he says this we should do i can go and disprove him no 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 these are the analytics that shows today you should not do that so that kind of more analytical decision making all the companies started doing it we call it as intelligence uh, intelligent decision making that is one aspect which we are adapt ad adapting today as a university and uh, as well as uh, working with these things there are a lot of works that are involved in automating a lot of things because uh, as you see the current industry in our i mean uh, the most job giving industry in our country is the uh, customer service sector so with the help of technology like platforms like this, the level one in that whole customer service sector will be gone actually saying. So that's one thing which we need to actually look upon and we need to adapt these kind of technologies to reduce that hassles also actually monitoring them and uh, get, get getting feedbacks from level ones is a tedious task. So we, we kind of automated whole level one and getting into level two. And then from level two, we get all these analytics using the platforms like you for marketing, automation, analytics and all. So that actually is one thing which we are looking forward to also. So hope we can see we can do wonders with that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, certainly the technology uh, plays a major role uh, from uh, beginning to the end. In fact, uh, you must have seen in the papers today, uh, even the artificial intelligence is going to be used for paper evaluation, in fact. So already three universities are using it and it's likely to be introduced in the Anna University also. Okay, so uh, the entering of technology into education is going to be inevitable and uh, certainly it will make our life easier and uh, it will be more focused actually. It will be highly, uh, you know, this technology usage will be uh, you know, will ensure that uh, more focus will be there for uh, uh, good education, no doubt. So, improve the visibility of an institution. We should we should be more adaptable. As Sar said, we have to adapt. So, one uh, uh, good property we should have is adaptability. Uh, said all of us know that one insect surveying millions of years is cockroach because of it adopt like this we our institution should adopt what is the environment we should be aware 
we should get as sar said sar said we should get feedback what is expected of that uh, current environment what is changing according to that we have to build a strong infrastructure fulfill that uh, uh, environment then uh, we should with the help of faculty all those things what is the expectation also changing so changing expectation we should fulfill the with the help of faculty members all those things we should give all stakeholders ch changing then we have to adapt to this we have to uh, observe then we have to get what is the changes taking place accordingly we so if you uh, give all those things our visibility will increase adaptability is the only thing uh, i'll have to thank the moderator for this question because now i have something that i can agree with commander velu sir uh, over the last probably 30 years 50 years the way we've been teaching in classes hasn't really changed i think where we will find technology to make a big impact is going to be inside classrooms i think over the next 5 years we're going to see more changes than what we would have seen in the last 100 years see typically right uh, academicians here would agree with me how much has a kid learned from the day he joined college to like let's say the first internals happening is judged only when he writes the first internals before that there is no scientific measure of how much a student is kind of understanding from the classes or how much is he learning so that's about a month to a month and a half away from the time he joins there's no other way to know this and a lot of times students are just involved in passive learning they're sitting they're probably observing classes a lot of cases they are physically present mentally absent now technology is going to make a major change there so for example our edtech platform that we use in running these collaborative degree programs at the end of every session there is a quick quiz where you know whether the kid has understood what has been taught in the class or not and there is pressure on the kid to listen to that class because at the end of the session there is going to be a quiz and the faculty will know whether he really listened or not the coding that we teach is real time on our edtech platform at the end of the first question the teacher will know which are the students who got the question right which are the students who are struggling to kind of write the code for the problem given so these are just some of the advances of technology in terms of how teaching learning process is changing in colleges and i think this is where there is going to be a lot of changes that we'll see over the next 3 to 5 years so, uh, so i think uh, that uh, brings us to the end of this discussion i hope uh, all of you had uh, certain intakes and inputs uh, which you can you know really apply into your daily life uh, you know when you are working in the admission space with that i would like to thank all of you and uh, all of you in the uh, audience also uh, to be you know uh, be present with us and uh, you know being a part of this event